Okay, so let's uh, show you kind of the stacking basics in uh, Deep Sky Stacker. So I'm going to open up that program. Okay, so once you open up the program, you're going to see uh, you've got your two main windows here. Uh, this top one is your image window, and the lower one is your file list window. You do have uh, some extra features up here. This is basically like your exposure and like contrast sliders here, which I, I never use those. I've really never seen any value in that particular feature. But on the left side over here, this is kind of the business end of the program. This is where you can set your parameters for batch stacking and registering the image and then of course stacking the images. You can set all of your option settings here like say for instance if you're using a DSLR versus like a monochrome camera that takes the images and fits files versus raw files or TIFF files. To load the images uh, there's one way you can do it. You can just click on this open picture files. So here we see all of our uh, light frames. This is, uh, I just labeled them in the DNG file here. I'll select the first one and then scroll down to the last one. I'll select the last one, highlight those all, and then you'll just click open and that will load them into your, your file list window right here. I'm not going to do that. Um, I want to show you my preferred way to do this. I'll go into Adobe Bridge. I'll go down to, uh, let's see, let me find that. Okay, there's the Soul Nebula. Let's do that one. I will click on my Lights folders, which I've, I just have them labeled as DNG. It's important to, to make sure whenever you're selecting these that you're only selecting your star images. Like, I, I've actually already stacked this image, so down at the bottom, I've got all of these uh, metadata files that are you know, associated with each one of these light files, but we're going to ignore that for now. I uh, select the first one, go down, select uh, the batch there, and then I'm just going to drag those in to my window here. And DSS is, is pretty smart. It, it automatically sees that those are star images, so those are, those are going to be your light frames. So we're going to click OK there. And now we're, we're going to do the exact same thing with our darks. I'm going to select the first one and then I'm going to select the last one here. I'm going to drag those in and then we're going to select dark frames. Those are the dark frames. And now we're going to do uh, the same thing for our flats. Select the first one, select the last one, drag and drop, select flat frames here. We're going to click OK. Now that we've got, um, and of course you can also do that with like your bias files and your offset files. I don't have any of those for this particular uh, image, but down here you'll see all of your relevant data. It's got your file path, it's got your file name, it's got the type of file. Like here you can see all the flats. If I scroll down, uh, you can see the, the darks. Um, actually, let me click on that so it'll organize them all. And you can see the lights there. Um, if you are using like a monochrome camera and you've, you've used a filter, you'll you know you can separate them by the filter that you've used. Now the score uh, tab right here is very important. Now I've I've actually already registered these files, so they have uh, score numbers already assigned to them. But before you before you register your files, they'll just all say you know NA right here. But what this score value is, is basically, it's like based on how many stars that the program can see, how clear those particular stars are, how sharp they are, and it also uh, weighs in things like anomalies or artifacts, noise, th things like that that just gives it kind of a, a lower score. After you uh, register the picture, it'll, it'll show you those scores, and I'll, I'll cover a little bit of that uh, later here. But the main thing that, that you really want to look for is you want to look at your size column. And this is basically going to make sure that these are all done from the same camera. They've all got the same image size. And then they're all the exact same bit depth right here. And then uh, definitely look at your ISO values. Make sure that those are all the same. Look at your exposure times. Make sure those are all the same. Now, of course, those are going to be different for your darks versus your flats versus your lights. 
definitely make sure that all of your lights were shot using the exact same exposure length and once you've done that say for instance you know this was like night one and you've loaded all these in and once you've loaded these in deep sky stacker is going to open up uh, another group here this uh, this tab group one so we're going to click on that and you can load all the images in from like say a second night shooting into um, group one exactly the same way that you did them in the main group and that'll help keep from contaminating the image with mixed exposure values, um, ISOs, things like that. It, once you've grouped them like that, Deep Sky Stacker knows how to kind of weigh those differently instead of just lumping them all into, um, into the composition. So from here, once we have all of these loaded, you're going to want to click on Register Checked Pictures. Once you click on that, it's going to pop up this dialog box and the first thing that that you'll see is a few options here register already registered pictures which you know if i was going to re-register those i would keep that keep that click automatic detection of hot pixels but now this one is pretty important say that you want to go ahead and stack after you've registered all the images it'll scan through and according to the value that you put in here say for instance if i put in 90 percent it'll go ahead and kick out 10% of the images that have low score values. That will greatly improve your image, but the blinking and peeping process kind of takes care of that to a large degree. So any ones that I've missed, you know, I might put in, you know, like 95% or maybe still 90% and that will also improve the uh, the quality of the final image. And then here you've got your your recommended settings for this particular batch and if you see any of these options here that have that are highlighted red, um, that could be like a warning message, or it could just simply be an option that you can change. And you can select, you know, say for instance, use sigma clipping combination method, which is a particular algorithm that it, it uses to um, kick out any stray variants that are in there, or you could use a, a different one. So we'll click OK there, and then if you, if you wanted to uh, stack these immediately after, you can check your stacking parameters here. It's also going to show you the algorithm that it's using to um, to basically um, stack these. Pretty much the standard default settings that Deep Sky Stacker has are, are pretty good. They're usually the ones that I use. Depending on the target, I might switch these to, to a different one, and I highly recommend playing around with some of these different settings just to kind of see what differences it makes in the output file. Click on your output tab. You need to direct where the output file is going to go to but also you want to select a temporary files folder this is basically just temporary files while the program is uh, stacking the images it, it creates these data files and they, they take up quite a bit of room so you, you want to make sure that you have plenty of disk space on your hard drive before you do that another option here is enable 2x drizzle or enable 3x drizzle if you click this it can improve the the quality of your image it's basically it's almost like a dither function it will align the stars like you know even tighter it's it is you know something that, that can make an improvement but it comes with a, a pretty large caveat it it increases your your stacking time it might go from you know a two hour stacking process to like maybe a four or five hour stacking process so that is a, a huge consideration there so i'm going to click ok here and before we do this you can also click on the advanced tab and this is your star detection threshold this is basically going to help the program align all of the images together according to how all the stars are in the image so let's compute the number of detected stars and we'll just start off with 20 percent so i'm going to click that this is usually a, a pretty quick process so at 20 percent it detected 24 stars which generally I'm looking for at least 25, maybe up to 75 or maybe 100. But as long as you have about 24 selected, it's going to be able to align all of these, these light frames accurately. But just kind of to show you how it works, I'm going to drop this down to, uh, let's try 10%. I'm going to recompute the number of stars. And... So this time, yeah, it, it gave us 45 stars there. So the lower the, um, the percent here, the more stars it's going to, um, to detect. So 
All right, I'm gonna back out of this because I've already done this for this particular stack. Once I've, I've loaded all of my images here, I'm gonna scroll down to the light files. Okay, so here's the start of our light files. So from here all the way down is my light, my light frames. I'm gonna go about to the middle part of this batch and I'm gonna select an image, and, and this is just kind of a rule of thumb is to select one from the middle part of your batch. Or if you, if you know that there's a particular image that is composed exactly the way that you want it, if you select this file and you right click and you select use as reference frame, you'll notice that it places a little asterisk right here. So this is telling Deep Sky Stacker to compare all of your light frames to your reference frame. So it will align all of the other images as close as possible to this particular reference frame right here. It's not, not mandatory to do that, that step, but I do think that you know, it's gonna give you closer to the, the final composition that, that you want for your final image. That's pretty much the basics of uh, Deep Sky Stacker, and we will move on to the next part.